Hey you guys, I hope you have had a wonderful week. Just want to come on here for a little while and talk to you about something that's been really heavy on my heart. And that is that I've seen in my generation and the generations before is that we have a, a lack of a desire and pursuit of God. We don't pray like we once did. We don't seek Him like we once did. We're having a hard time going to church like we once did. I see that in my generation and it concerns me. Why are we here? How did we get here? How did we get out of this state to where we desire Him more? And so I began to ask God this question and He brought me to a statement that I've, I've said a bunch. And it's the statement that says, we need to pass the baton to the next generation. We need to pass the baton of this glorious gospel to the next generation. And God reminded me that we are not called to pass a baton to the next generation. We are called to pass a torch. Because when Jesus left this earth, he sent the Holy Spirit and fire. It says that there came cloven tongues as a fire upon each of them. What was God doing? What was Jesus sending? He was sending the fire that would light the torch. He was sending the fire that would go into every generation. You see, we're not called to pass a church from one successor to the another. We're not called just to pass an organization, a family business on to generation to generation. No. We are here to host the presence and the power of God and to pass it from generation to generation. That's what we're here to do. Not a baton. A baton is just a hunk of metal. A baton is just something that you can pass and hold flippantly. You know, a lot of times I think that the reason that we have people saying things like, I love God, but I can live how I want to, or I'm a Christian, but I, I live um, not exactly with the Bible, and that's okay. God still loves me. I hear people say that, and it's because I truly believe, because we've been passing a baton and not a torch. If you ever seen in the Olympics when they carry the Olympic torch, they carry it with such reverence. They carry it with such awe because there is fire. And they're taking every step, every step with that fire in mind. And they're walking passionately. They are walking in boldness. And there's a reverence for the fire. You see, when there's fire in the church, it creates a reverence in the people, it creates a desire for holiness. You can't help but stand in awe of who God is when his presence and his power is there. But when it's just not on fire, when it's not inflamed with who God has called them to be, then it's just, well, I go to church. I go to church twice a month, maybe. I pray sometimes. We get that way because the fire's gone out. But I believe that God is wanting to reignite his church that same fire that he poured out on his people in Acts is still available to us today. We're still intended to walk in the miraculous. We're still intended to walk and be led by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are called to be a church on fire. And you know, in the Olympics, what they did is when the, the fire went out on the torch, they would take that torch and they would put a date on it and they would memorialize it of when it was on fire. But now it no longer is. I'm afraid in some of our churches, that's where we are. The fire used to be there, but it's gone out. And we still talk about the great things of the past. You know, we talk about Acts all the time. We talk about how God showed up. We talk about what he did in the miraculous, but I don't wanna just talk about what they did in Acts. I don't want to just talk about the things they did in the past. No, not when it's available to me today. When it's available to you today. Oh my cry is God send the fire. Just as when he spoke through the prophet Joel and when Peter then quoted the prophet Joel that said, your sons and daughters will prophesy. 
Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Oh, this is that fire and I long for it. I'm desperate for the fire. The church is not the church without the fire. So today I pray that you begin to seek it. I pray that we quit saying things like, well, the Holy Ghost showed up today in church. You know, I'm convinced we can't have the church. We can't have a church service without the Holy Ghost. If he doesn't show up, we haven't had church. We've just had a meeting. We need the fire. I pray that you begin to seek it. I pray that you begin to ask God to rekindle it in your life or to start it afresh if, he, if there hasn't been a fire in your life. I'm hungry for it. I'm hungry for revival. I'm hungry for God. I want it. I want to see revival take place in this generation. No more talking about what he did in the 50s, although I do love to talk about that. I don't want to just talk about that. I don't want to just talk about what he did in the 80s. I don't want to just talk about what he did in these great revivals I've heard of. No, he's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. And just like it says in Psalms, where it says, Oh God, revive us again. I ask God, revive us again. We need him. And I'm desperate for him. I pray today that you begin to seek him like you never have. Begin to ask him to send the fire. Because we're called to carry the torch and not a baton. And we're going to see great and mighty things. I know it. Because he's a great and mighty God. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you have a great week. And I hope you begin to see the miraculous. Because revival isn't coming. Revival is here.